Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And this is the Xbox Series S, the cheapest next-gen console that you can buy right now. But how does it compare to the Xbox Series X and what features, if any, is it actually missing? Is this smaller and cheaper Xbox worth buying or should you spend that £200 or $200 more for the Series X? Let me show you why I think this could be the perfect entry-level console to buy and what the real pros and cons are over the X. Today I will go over the specs and the obvious features, but I will also show you how it runs on a 4K TV, bearing in mind the Series S only supports a 1440p resolution for gaming. And if you want to see more gaming and tech videos from myself, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The first thing you'll notice about the Series S is the overall design and size. It's absolutely tiny, especially when you compare it to the Series X. It's actually 60% smaller, so if space is an issue in your setup, this could be a huge advantage to you. And just like with the previous gen, the S version comes in white instead of black, along with a matching controller. This controller is no different to the other colours that are available for the Series S and the Series X. It's not lacking any features at all. On the box itself, you've got the small Xbox branding, you've got the black grille on top, which really stand out against that white design. Overall, it's small and has a very clean design. It's quite a sleek looking console. Now, what's great about the Series S is you can actually lay it flat or you can stand it up. So, for example, if I wanted to stand it up on my shelf and I could, or if I wanted to lay it flat and under my TV unit, I could do that as well. Now, the Series S comes with a 512GB SSD, which is a noticeable step up from last gen in terms of speed and load times, but it's half the size of the Series X, which comes with a 1TB drive. Realistically, you're getting about 364GB of usable space from this SSD. That means you'll probably get around 5-6 to six games installed, depending on their size, or one copy of Call of Duty. For an entry-level console, I think 364GB is fine, but you can also purchase a 1TB storage expansion card, although that will set you back as much as the console. So if you're looking to install 5 or 6 games at a time, the Series S will probably be fine. But if you like to have, say, the latest Call of Duty and Warzone installed, you've probably already maxed out the storage on the Series S. And once you factor in updates to your existing games or downloading new games as they come out, the 364GB could be a problem. When it comes to playing games on the Series S, you're going to get the exact same offering as the Series X. I'm not talking about power or resolution, I'll cover that in a minute, I'm talking about the actual games. So every game available for the Series X is on the Series S too. The games are optimised for these consoles, so that means you can play the same back catalogue of Xbox One and 360 games plus the latest releases. Game Pass is incredible, I've said this before on other videos and I think Game Pass along with the Series S is an awesome combo. You can play the latest FIFA, Forza, Back for Blood or download any of the old classic games like Halo. I mean sure, most of these games could technically be played on the older Xbox One, but it's going to be better and faster on the Series S, especially with that SSD. And it is whisper quiet too. I knew the Xbox Series X was quiet because I've been using that for the last year or so, but take a listen to just how quiet the Series S is. Another awesome feature that the Series S has, as well as the Series X, is Quick Resume. This feature really is next gen. Being able to close one game and open another in a matter of seconds is great. It doesn't just close the game though, it saves the exact moment that you left it. So if you're driving around a corner in Forza and you leave that game to play something else, when you come back to it, it will be the exact same spot. Just one thing to note about the Series S is there's no disk drive. This means your entire game purchase and experience is going to be digital only. No more cheap deals on physical games or borrowing discs from your mates. Personally, I buy 99% of my games digitally on both the Xbox and the PlayStation 5. It's easier to buy, play and store, and switching between games is so much more convenient. If you do go down the all digital route like I have, my advice is to look around online for websites that sell PSN and Xbox Live credit. I use two different sites and it saves me around 15% on credit, which means every game that I buy through the stores, well they are 15% cheaper. So even though I've already shown you some impressive gameplay from the Series S, there's one big difference between the X and the S, and that's the resolution. The Series X is capable of true 4K gaming, which means that what you see is the best available right now. Whereas with the Series S, it's limited to 1440p. Now this might sound bad, but we're not talking 1080p here. 1440p is still watchable, and once it's upscaled to 4K, it looks okay. Okay, so this example here, this is Forza and I'm currently playing it on the Xbox Series X. It looks nice, super sharp and clearly looks like it's 4K. But let's look really closely to some of the content on the screen. So we're going to look at the badge here on the back of the car. You can see here what it says. So remember, this is in 4K and this is on the Xbox Series X. Now we're going to switch over to the Xbox Series S. Same game and it still looks good. But everything just looks a little bit softer and almost out of focus. Now bear in mind I've not changed anything here. It's the same HDMI cable, it's the same port on the TV. But I can definitely see a difference. 
Now, if we go back and we look at the same badge on the back of the car, it's completely different to the Series X. There's no denying it looks pixelated and almost unreadable. Now, comparing the two side by side, it's obvious that the Xbox Series X at 4K looks a lot better than the Series S at 1440p, which is then upscaled to 4K. These results are obvious, but it's only when comparing them side by side do you really see how much detail you're missing. So if you're used to playing or seeing native 4K content, you're going to notice this difference. But don't forget, you need a TV or a monitor that supports 4K to even see it. And even then, you need to be pretty close to appreciate the true 4K over upscaled 1440p. If you're using a monitor that's 1440p, well, you're not going to see any difference in resolution anyway, so don't worry about it. And any games that are enhanced for the Xbox Series X, like the older games with this logo, these also won't be native 4K on the Series S, but that's down to that same 1440p limitation. When it comes to audio, just like with the Series X, the Series S supports everything that you need. This includes Dolby Digital, DTS, True HD, and Atmos. Both are lacking the optical port, so if you're planning on using an optical out to your TV or soundbar, you'll need to use HDMI instead. The audio that it supports is not only great for gaming, but ideal for entertainment too. So the Series S supports all of the streaming apps you would expect to see, including Disney+, Netflix, and Amazon Prime. And what's great about these streaming apps is even though the gaming side of the console is limited to 1440p, the playback for content is actually 4K. And as all of these apps support 4K and even Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, there is no difference to the Series S over the Series X. For a console this small and cheap to double up as a 4K streaming box is awesome. I usually use the apps on my TV for watching Netflix, but the apps on the Series S is exactly the same. So unlike the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 digital console, the Series S and X do have different specs. The Series S does share some of the features from the Series X, including ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode, VRR and AMD FreeSync, but the internals are different. So the CPU is similar but not identical to the X. The X is running a 3.8 GHz, while the S is a 3.6 GHz processor. The GPU power on these differ again. This is the reason behind the resolution being capped at 1440p instead of 4K. Obviously, as the Series S does not have a disk drive, it's unable to play Blu-ray discs, something that the Series X can do. But if you do like buying physical games or movies, and this Xbox will be the only way for you to play them, you might need to go for the X instead. One question worth asking is, with the differences in power between these two, will we see a greater divide between how future games will look? Right now the games look very similar, just the resolution is different, but as developers create games for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, will the S see more than just a drop in resolution? Like, will the games look worse? For the games that exist already, it shows that the Series S is more than capable of playing those games, but as more intensive games are released for next gen, it will be interesting to see how the S handles those. A quick look around the console itself to have a look at the available ports. There's one HDMI 2.1 port, three USB 3.1 ports, and an Ethernet port. Now, although the HDMI port is 2.1, which means it's next gen 4K 120Hz ready, the cable that is provided within the box is actually an HDMI 2.0. Today, I have been using an HDMI 2.1 cable, and that's the same one I usually use on the Series X, but I thought it was worth mentioning anyway. And in case you were wondering what you get inside the Xbox Series S box, well, here it is. So it obviously comes with the Xbox itself, an HDMI 2.0 cable, a power cable, and the white controller. There's also some batteries if you're not using a charging dock. Before I talk about which one is right for you or whether it's worth buying one, let me just mention the prices. So the Series X costs £449 or $499, while the Series S costs £249 or $299. That's a £200 or $200 price difference. And for that £200 or dollars, you're getting a more powerful GPU, native 4K games, an Ultra HD disk drive, and double the storage. I guess the question is, will you benefit from those differences? If you're using a 1440p monitor that cannot upscale to 4K, you're not bothered about resolution, or you only play older games on Game Pass, the Series S is perfect for you. If you have no need for the disk drive, you'll only have three or four games installed, or you think you'll be watching Netflix more than gaming, the Series S again is ideal. But if you've got a 4K display and you really want to see that native 4K gaming experience, or if you need a disk drive for your movies and games, well, the X is the only way. Even with all of those differences, it also comes down to budget and availability. If the Series S is the only option available right now, you will not be disappointed. But as soon as you start spending money on external storage, or you don't want to be limited to a digital-only purchasing experience, you may as well go for the Series X. So the ultimate question is, which one would I buy, or would I buy a Series S? And the answer is, yes, definitely. 
is an awesome little console. It plays all of the next gen games, it's quiet and it's really small. And even if you've got a Series X already, I think the Series S works well as a second console. Maybe in a bedroom, a kitchen or a playroom. Somewhere where you don't need a Series X but you can continue playing or streaming your content. For me to be able to play Forza in the living room but if I want to, I can have the Series S in the bedroom and continue playing it on an evening. And considering how cheap and available these Series S's are, it's a must buy for me. Well you just made it to the end of today's video so thank you for watching. And if you drop an Xbox Series S in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up for staying until the end. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.